In Texas, size matters, and we are about to go big. Ten of the best strongman athletes in the world are here to kick things off at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. Dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas, just outside of Austin, usually plays host to baseball, but over the next two days, it will play host to 10 of the best strongman athletes on the planet. For the first time ever, a strongman competition at the Rogue Invitational. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I am Sean Woodland with former Europe's Strongest Man, Lawrence Chalet. And Lawrence, we're going to start things off with a bang here, a crowd favorite, the one rep max elephant bar deadlift. We are starting with all about static strength. The deadlift is the, the lift that everyone talks about. Who can lift the most weight from the floor to a standing position? These guys need a good start to this contest. We've got a long, grueling five events for the guys to challenge themselves. But the deadlift is the showstopper. I want to see some big thousand pound pulls today. And it's very likely that we will see that event number one, the Elephant Bar One Rep Max Deadlift presented by the U.S. Army. Watch your warrior. Visit GoArmy.com to find out. Three chances to establish a one rep max. There is some strategy and some gamesmanship that will come into play here. More on that in a second. But that is the elephant bar. That is just one of the five challenges that await these athletes. For more, for more on what is ahead over the next two days, let's send it down to Kiki Dixon. Guys, most of the action for the strawmen are going to happen right here at home plate. We've got everything set up for the elephant bar deadlift. I mean, a fan favorite, no doubt. Who doesn't love seeing a thousand pounds pulled? We also have another familiar event with that glorious wheel of pain. However, we do have a new apparatus for these guys to get after. It's going to be amazing. Sean, what are you looking forward to the most? Thank you, Kiki. I cannot wait to see that thing in action, the Wheel of Pain, one of the most impressive implements ever built for a strongman competition. But before we can deal with that, we have to deal with the Elephant Bar. And the 10 men who will be taking part in this event are getting set. There are some guys here, we talk about 1,000 pounds, who can easily hit that mark here today. Yeah, for me, we've got to be looking at J.F. Caron to start with. This guy is built to deadlift. Mm -hmm. He's pulled some huge numbers in the past. He's yes, done some yes. big numbers on this particular bar. And from talking to him recently, he says his training's gone very well. He feels rested. He feels in good shape. So I'm expecting to see big numbers from the strongest man in Kansas. Jerry Pritchett on the right, standing up behind the bench, is another man who has a lot of experience with the elephant bar deadlift. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry has not had a good year this year. He's kind of suffered a number of injuries, but if he is fresh, if he's fully recovered, we've seen what he's done in the past. He's pulled some of the biggest numbers on this bar. He's a monster deadlifter. And here we are, starting with the Polish sensation, returning from injury. Never the best deadlifter. This is always the event that costs him a lot. Mateusz Kieliszkowski was 781 on the bar. Strapped in. Doesn't look like a... He really committed to that. See him strapped in again. 781 is an open. I mean, this is the lightest weight we're going to see today. So we're almost up at 800 pounds to start with. It is crazy, but it shows the standard that we're at right now in this sport. And Kaylor Koski is going to not make an attempt here. He's going to exit the platform. You saw him sort of pat his right lat there. You can see the big scar on his, his arm there. He's, he's an unfortunate athlete who's suffered a number of injuries recently. I saw him compete very recently in Dubai. It was his first contest back, and he looked very nervous. He's still so exceptionally good. He, he, you know, he's so dynamic. He's got four events to come in this contest where he can really excel. But the deadlift has notoriously never been his strongest event. Perhaps he's felt a little a niggle there and, and just doesn't want to risk aggravating anything, knowing there's better events to come. Tom Stoltman will be up next, 796 pounds on the bar. And if you're someone who has not watched a strongman competition with the deadlift, it works a little differently than what you might be used to. They all have to declare their opening weight. The, bar on the, the weight on the bar will never go down. And then after round one is really where the strategy starts to come in. Absolutely. It's a very interesting concept because the tactics become more important. Often in strongman, it's just everyone lifts the same weight and the bar goes up. Where they get to, to, to choose their weights after each lift, 
it, it favours guys that are, that are experienced, such as maybe a, a Brian Shaw. I think he'll be very meticulous with his numbers that he picks. I'm surprised seeing Tom Stoltman start as one of the, the lighter guys. His deadlift improved a lot. He did have a, a brutal deadlift event last weekend, and he, he performed exceptionally well. Maybe he just wants to get a good safe lift in the bag and then take some bigger jumps. And you'll see that with guys. Some guys will take smaller jumps. Some guys will take bigger jumps. They're trying to save energy. It's um, an interesting physical as well as mental battle. 796 pounds on the bar for Tom Stoltman. So I'm expecting a good, comfortable pull here. And look at that, nice and easy, solidly locked out. That'll settle the nerves, gets him used to the bar. And this is something we haven't seen. Tom has not ever lifted on this bar before. A lot of the guys have experience. He'll feel a lot better after feeling that first weight. And now he'll have a good idea of what to go for in his second lift. You mentioned nerves, and we were talking before we came on here. You could see some of the guys down there as they got ready, sort of trying to just calm themselves before this competition started. What's that like being in that setting? Well, this is such a big event, you know. The, people have spoken about this being the biggest event of the year. Rogue have put the biggest amount of prize money into a strongman show. So all these guys want to perform well. They've all had, you know, some have had a tough year in terms of lots of competitions condensed into a small period. Others are coming back from injury. You know, it, it, there's a lot of questions that need answering. And this first event is going to show us who's in shape. It's going to show us who's up for this. And is the current Europe's strongest man, Luke Stoltman, another guy that's had a great year. He's won a few internationals. And as I just mentioned, he won Europe's strongest man. Deadlift is probably his weakest lift of the, the contest. So he'll want to be doing damage control here. Anything where he can place... Anything other than last, to be honest, is going to be good for him. He does have some great events to come, and he needs to be smart and select the right numbers so that maybe the people that take the risks, he can then sneak in behind them if, they, if the risk is too much. 801 pounds on the bar for Luke Stoltman. He is the older of the two Stoltman brothers. He's 36. His younger brother, Tom, who we just saw, is 27. And that is no problem. Good, solid for Luke. 800 pound pull there. And something to point out to, to fans watching. In this contest, no super suits are allowed and no figure of eight straps. So you can't extend the bar. Sometimes with a figure of eight straps, you can kind of let the bar slip down into your fingers. With the normal straps, you've got to hold on, keep some pressure. This is a real pure test of deadlifting power. Jerry Pritchett will be up next at 8.06. Lexi Novikov on the left is getting his belt situated. It's now Jerry Pritchett will step up for her, his first attempt. Jerry's a huge deadlifter, one of the top deadlifters on the planet. 2020 had an incredible year. Unfortunately, we've not seen the same performances in 2021. I hope he's fully recovered because when this guy is on fire, he's a monster deadlifter. 8.06 for Pritchett, his first attempt. Jerry is a thousand pound plus deadlifter. He's one of the biggest deadlifters on the planet when he's in top shape. I'm interested to see how this moves because I haven't seen too many videos from him recently. Normally when he's focused and feeling good, we see a lot of confidence coming from his social media. He wants to show people what he's capable of. He's been quiet. We know he's coming back from injury. Has he had enough time to get himself in shape? 806 pounds. <laughs> It wasn't bad, but it didn't convince me. I've got to be honest, you know, I've seen him pull those like they're speed reps before. I'm not convinced we're going to see the best of Jerry today after seeing that. I hope he proves me wrong, but I think normally he pulls that kind of weight much easier. Every time I've seen him deadlifted, regardless of the weight, he always has just the same technique, the same tempo. He is so technically good. He's got an interesting technique. To, he, he's someone that stands very, very wide. He gets a lot of, he gets squat down low, a lot of leg drive into the movement. And normally when he's, when he's at his strongest, he explodes up off the floor with, with great ferocity. For me, I don't see that confidence in him at the moment. It's sad because, like I said, in his best, when he's fresh, he's just a pleasure to watch deadlifting. And that will bring up Alexei Novikov, one of the young up-and-comers in the sport. 821 pounds for his opening lift. Now, Alexei has had an incredible year. He's probably been the most consistent performer other than World's Strongest Man. He's been on the podium in every single show he's done, and he was the World's Strongest Man winner in 2020. It, I think that loss at World's Strongest Man kind of <laughs> really motivated him, and I've seen great improvement in his static strength over the last year. Deadlift wasn't his strongest lift a couple of years back. 
He's pulled a thousand pounds in a contest this year. That's wearing the super suit and the figure of eight straps. Let's see what he's like out of the suit. 821 is good for Novakov. Excellent lift there. I was kind of worried then because he dropped it. Obviously, some rules are different in contests, and you're not always allowed to drop the bar, but he's got the good lift. And it looked, it looked very solid. He's got beautiful technique. Look how he squats down, drives hard off the floor, and then the powers those hips through at the locker. His, his top end strength on his deadlift is exceptionally good. And I think this bar could suit him. It's, there's a little bit of flex in there. It allows him to get, you don't get the full weight till it's up a little higher, closer to the knees. And we've seen him in the past do some huge numbers on partial lifts. So good start there for the 2020 World's Strongest Man. Now we'll bring up Martins Lietzis. His opening lift at 856 pounds. And we talked about this uh, earlier in the day, but he's another guy coming off an injury. Exactly that, and, and the in, you know he suffered with his hip recently. Um, so the deadlift, if your hip's not firing, isn't always the best lift. Lee Cease is an incredible deadlifter. He, he's better for reps, I'd say, than for top-end maximum strength. But this is going to answer the questions because it's been a long time since we've seen this man. He is an incredible competitor. He's not someone that likes to turn up if he's not in shape. So let's see how good he's looking today. You see the wheel of pain in the background, and that is an implement that Martins has done very well on the last two years. He won it the first time that the uh, event was at the Arnold Strongman Classic. That was back in 2019, and then finished second in 2020. So that's a, on Saturday he will face that. He can score some points there. So now we're going to have an athlete change, as it looks like a weight may have changed, and that means that Luke Stoltman will be the next man to lift. Because remember, the weight on the bar can never go down. So that means that Luke Stoltman's second declared lift was less than what Leetes was going to open with. Yeah, it's an interesting element to this deadlift, champion, uh, this deadlift contest because some athletes are going to get much longer rest periods than others. The, the guys that are starting later, they don't want to cool down too much. They need to make sure they stay warm. Uh, and guys like Luke here who are jumping in quicker he's going to get less recovery time between each lift. So interesting. It's, it's just a different twist on the, the elements that we're, we're seeing today. You can see he's chalking his hands up there. He wants them to be as dry as possible so that when he grips onto the bar, everything is secure. 846 pounds. This will be Luke Stolman's second of three lifts. Stoltmans are such popular athletes. They've really blown up the last couple of years. They're... They're lovely guys as well, but their performances back up that popularity. Winning multiple major shows this year between the two of them. Their father, Ben Stockman, I'm sure he's watching, is an extremely proud man of his, his sons. Here goes Luke at 8.46. And he is able to stand that up and make gets, it count. Gets the good lift. Luke has exceptionally powerful quad. You see he gets good speed off the floor. It's once that bar goes over the knees, he's not quite getting the, the position to shoot those hips through as quick as he'd like. So one more look at the second lift. lift from Luke Stolman. Nice thing. He has to push the knees forward to try and stop it sliding back down. That's kind of known as a hitch. So in strongman, absolutely fine. Gets it solidly locked out and gets the good bounce. One lift remaining for Luke Stoltman, who is now your leader so far. 846 pounds, the heaviest lift that we have seen. Now that will bring up Martins Lietzis, who is going to open at 856. Luke Stoltman currently our biggest lifter, but he's already done his second lift. And now we have Martins Lietzis, 2019 World's Strongest Man, back in action. I'm extremely excited to see how, what kind of shape he's in. He's a great character, an incredible athlete. Someone that really knows how to bring his best to competition day. You don't always see the big lifts from, from him in the, in the gym. His training, you can look at his training and just think, oh, this guy's not too bad, but you don't look at him as the biggest lifter. And then when it comes to competition, he does some incredible things. Opening lift for the Dragon. Good, solid lift. I think he knows his deadlift's not at his best, but he's happy to be back in competition. Big kiss to the crowd, gets the down signal, a good opening lift. 
Martinez leads. He's now with the heaviest lifter we have seen at 856 pounds. He has two more attempts for me. Look how low he squats down. He has plenty of leg drive whilst pulling hard with the glutes and hamstrings and lower back. You can see that's an F, there's a lot of effort into that lift for a first lift. Normally, I'd like to see it move a little faster, but he's got the lift in the bag. I don't think we're going to see a huge jump from him, though. Six men have lifted. Four remain here. And remember, Luke Stolman has made two attempts. Now Jerry Pritchett is back. This will be his second attempt. Jerry also going for 856 pounds. Now this shows me that Jerry's not in, not in his best shape. And I hate saying that because Jerry is such a huge deadlifter and a great athlete. He's just not back to his best. And saying that, I think that lift was better than his first. He looks like he's getting fired up. He's happy about it. It's good to see some hunger from Jerry, trying to get some good points on the board in this first event, the elephant bar deadlift. And the second lift is good for 8.56, tying in with Martin Leeds. You can see the standing on the left side of the screen. He was lifted in what weight so far. Still four men have yet to head to the platform. And it looks like Alexei Novikov will now be coming back up to the platform for his second attempt. And the names that you would expect to be the guys who are putting up the big numbers are the ones who have yet to step out there. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think most people will, will be confident in, in looking at Brian Shaw and JF Caron to come out on top of this battle. Particularly looking at, at Jerry's not only his best. Normally Jerry's up in that battle. Uh, unfortunately, not back to his best currently. But JF Caron and Brian Shaw have pulled monstrous weights on this bar. And it's interesting to see nothing yet from Shiblikov. Shiblikov's pulled some huge weights on this. He is another athlete that has suffered with injuries this year. So I'm interested to see. He must be feeling confident to not yet come in and lift. Here's Novikov now with his second lift, 861 pounds. It's always interesting watching the guys, the different stances, different techniques. He has a very narrow stance there. Toes pointing forward, he's going to drive hard through the floor, chest will come up, plenty of drive with the quads, and then his hips come through nice and quickly. Very easy lift there. 861 is good as Mikhail Shiblikov. I mean, he's still waiting for his turn. He, he's such a, a crowd favorite. Always gives 100%. One more look at Novikov, second lift at 861. See, it's just that little fraction hard, hard off the floor, and then suddenly, once he's over his knees, he gets tremendous power through his boots. That will bring, bring out Rob Kearney for the first time. 876 pounds for Kearney. There's no colors in the mohawk today. He's normally more colorful than this. He's got the color in the, in the leggings and the shades. Feeling confident. So 876 on the bar for Kearney, making his first appearance here in the opening event. Three attempts for each athlete. So that stuff he's sniffing there is ammonia. It's, it clears your head. It's nothing more than that. It kind of wakes you up. Um, certainly gets you fired up to lift. And now he's strapping onto the bar. Kearney trained by the legendary Derek Poundstone. Definitely copies Derek's deadlifting technique. You often see him drive hard with the quads over the knees, and then he kind of pitches up just like that. He's mastered that movement. It works out well for him as 876 is good. Rob Kearney, your new leader after his first attempt. Three men have yet to lift. JF Carone, Brian Shaw, and Mikhail Shivlikov. So watching here again, you see him drive hard off the floor, and then what he does, he pushes his knees forwards, makes the bar stop on the quads, and then drives again. Now, I don't advise this. As a coach, you don't teach people to do it, but he's mastered it, and it works for him. Now, the first appearance for Brian Shaw as Rob Kearney confirms his score. 881. Here's the big former four-time World's Strongest Man winner. Winner of the Arnold's multiple times. One of the absolute greatest strongmen on the planet. He's had a good steady year. He's been probably the best year he's had com competition-wise in, in, in a while. But he wants to win a major again. And this is a show I know he's fired up for. I think he's got 
a great chance looking at the events. He's going to be a contender. And I think he, he's going to enjoy the deadlift. Brian Shaw has been in strongman competition since 2005 when he started career, his career winning Denver's Strongest Man without any formal training. 881 for him on the barbell. Big solid weight to start with. And a good solid pull there. 881 pounds puts him into first place. 400 kilos. Opening on 400 kilos. 881 pounds. Good solid lift. Again, Brian. Not convincing me that he's at his best. I haven't seen his best deadlifting in the last few years, but still massive weights. He's one of those guys that you can just never count out of a contest. He's too dangerous. He's too experienced. Nice and chilled. He's going to have a game plan. He's not one of these guys that just comes in and he's like hoping for the best. He has a game plan. He knows exactly what numbers he wants to lift. He knows how many reps he wants to do. He's someone that just methodically thinks about every single aspect. And I think sometimes it costs him against some of the younger athletes that just go for broke on, on more of the, the speed and quicker events. But this is all about who can lift the most. Tom Stolman is now up for his second lift. He will attempt 881 pounds to tie Brian Shaw. Another huge man. Six foot nine. Good solid lift there. Tom's going to be happy with that. 881 in the bag for the defending world's strongest man, and that still leaves two men left who have yet to make their first attempts, J.F. Corona and Mikhail Shivlikov. Shivlikov must be feeling confident. He's not come in light, you know. He's suffered a few injuries this year, but he has, he finally took some time off to recover. If we can see Shivlikov in top shape, He's a very dangerous man, and I hope he is in top shape because for the fans watching, he's always entertaining. You could expect nosebleeds with this man. <laughs> he just goes and goes and goes and gives 100% every single time he steps on the stage. Luke Stoltman will be up for his third and final lift, 886 pounds, to put himself on top of the standings here. So this is a smart number for Luke to go. It's, a, it's a, certainly a possible weight for him. He knows other guys are going to take bigger jumps. What he's trying to do here is get a lift which will beat other athletes' second lift. He knows he's not the biggest deadlifter. He's going to hope that some of the other guys go for big numbers and make mistakes. Now, there's really two sets of athletes here and two sets of uh, approaches. One's damage control, get the points. The other is what do I need to do to you know, outfox exactly my other competitors and actually win this event. Third and final attempt for Luke Stoltman, 886 pounds on that elephant bar. Getting strapped in. He's gonna take a big deep breath. He needs this, this like I said, if he can get this, he could potentially score some decent points for him on the deadlift. Good power, he needs to get it over those knees. He couldn't quite do it, you saw it just slow down. It was worth the effort. He knew if he got that, he could have potentially scored some bigger points than maybe he was predicted. 886 will be no good for Luke Stolman. His best lift, 846 pounds, and he is now done for the remainder of this event. And that will bring up the Siberian force, Mikhail Shivlikov, for the first time for his opening lift, 891 pounds on the barbell. I love this guy. He's just such a character. He's got muscles that are torn off. He doesn't ever give up. I've seen him do some incredible... He, he broke the Masters deadlift world record last year, and it was one of the hardest reps I've ever seen in my life. But he just refused to be beat. 41 years old now, competing in the Masters, but still competing with the absolute best on the planet. Started strong, man back in 2007. Former Russian Marine. He's missing his beret today. He normally wears them. So different technique. Look how his feet are pointing out to the side. Different to some of the other guys we saw earlier, such as Novikov. Every athlete is built differently. And this is one now, he's going to use more hamstring and glute power rather than the quad power that you see from like the Brian Shores. 
Shivlikov feeling a, a little bit of a, looks like a strain in the, the hamstring there, the hamstring so that lift up. will not. You can see the hamstring looks like it's kind of taped up. His calves are taped up. I can see some white tape under there. I've been, I've, I've been worried about him. I, I thought maybe he's come back and he's feeling good, but he has had a, so many injuries this year. And really, I know from experience, you have to take the time off and let the body recover. He is an incredible strong man. But you can't keep going to this level and pushing it all the time. JF Caron is the only man who has yet to lift. Now Alexei Novikov will be up next at 896, and that will be his third and final lift. So it's looking like this is going to develop into maybe a two-man battle between that man, J.F. Caron, and then Brian Shaw, who currently sits atop the overall leaderboard tied with uh, Tom Stoltman. The two of them have cleared 881 pounds, but Shaw has two lifts remaining. Stoltman has just one, and now Novikov making his way to the platform for the third and final time. 896 pounds. Alexei Novikov, you know, not just all brawn, has tons of brains. He has a master's degree in international economics and has worked as a business and financial advisor when he's not training and competing. He's a very smart young man. He's only 25 years old. He's already won the world's strongest man. And you can see that smarts when he's approaching events. He's very good at figuring events out and understanding what he needs to do. I've seen him compete in other shows this year where they do mystery events where the athletes didn't get to see what they should be doing. And he was the the best at figuring things out quickly. 896 for Novikov. I mean, he's got to get it over those knees. And no. just can't get it past that sticking point. And that's, that could cost him. You know, there's still some big lifters to come. He's currently in fourth, but with the likes of Lissis, Pritchett, and Caron to come. I don't think he's going to be too happy with that. He's got some great events. Later on, we're going to see him in the dumbbell. He's done some fabulous things recently in training on that. He's one of the best in the last two years. He's really dominated dumbbell events. But I think he wanted more out of the deadlift tonight. And JF Caron is now finally coming up to the platform for his opening lift at 906 pounds. Opening on over 900 pounds. Mikhail Shilakov. Let's see Novikov talking some things over there. Nine-time Canada's strongest man, nine man J.F. Caron, making his way to the platform. Dominated the Canadian scene over the last 10 years. Actually, this year he didn't win Canada's strongest man, and he wasn't the highest placed Canadian at World's strongest man. So he wants to be proving again that he is the number one Canadian. In 2015, he broke a Guinness Book of Records mark for turning a Volkswagen 13 times. Did that in China. The prior record was 10. Tremendous backstroke. I'm excited to see this lift. He's opening on 906. He feels confident. I spoke to him recently, and he said he felt fresh. He felt like training had gone really well. That's always a good sign with someone like JF. 906 pounds, Caron hits this. He is your new leader and still has two lifts remaining. And that wow, is no look at this. problem. He is confident, he's pulling powerfully. What a lift. I've not seen anyone do an opener that easy and he opened on 906 pounds. That has sent a message to the rest of the field here that you better have your A game if you have any chance of beating him <laughs> here in this opening event. I love how confident and laid back he is. He's not one of these guys that cares too much about the equipment that he's lifting on. He said, it's a deadlift, it's a deadlift. I'll lift on anything and look at the power. Look at the speed. What a lift. And the serious look there. He's like, yes, I'm the daddy when it comes to deadlifting. <laughs> Martins Leedsies will now step back up and try to just hit the weight that JF Caron made look like an empty barbell. 906 pounds still on the bars. Leedsies gets set up. This would tie him for the top spot in this event with JF Caron. This is big for Lises. He needs this. I think if he can pull this, he's going to put himself in a very good position for the rest of the show. Big brace, nice and tight. He needs it over the knees, and he's going to get it. Now, Lises Excellent. is good at 9.06. That's huge for Lises. It's going to give him good points on the deadlift. He's been so worried about this event. It's the only event he felt he could lose a lot of points on. He's confident with the four events to come. This is 
big, big news for the return of the former World's Strongest Man champion. Interesting starting position that we don't see for a lot of athletes starting from his yeah, knees. Yeah, he's to just get getting strapped in, and while he's on his knees, it allows him to breathe a little easier. Then you see the big squat down, lots of leg power, driving hard. He got it over the knees, he can maintain positioning, and then the glutes fire through, and look at the nod of approval. He is extremely happy with that lift. It's good to see him back in action. It's been a long time. He's always one of the most exciting athletes on the tour. Great to see him pull a big deadlift today. Here comes Jerry Pritchett to try and go for 9.06 to tie him with Corone and Leeds. But remember, Corone still has two lifts remaining. I've been harsh on Jerry, you know, saying he's not in his best shape. And I stand by that. He's, he's normally a thousand pound puller. He's someone that has tremendous back strength, but he's fighting hard. He doesn't want to give up. He's the iron outlaw, and look at this, he's going for it. Not today. It's always worth trying. One more attempt, and it's just not going to happen for Jerry Pritchett. <laughs> that leaves J.F. Corona and Martins Litis as the only two men have, who have lifted above 900 pounds. Pritchett will settle for a score of 856 pounds. Right now, good enough for seventh place. And Rob Kearney for his second lift, trying to become the new leader and set the new mark to beat at 911 pounds. So with Rob, it's all about whether he has the power to get it up to those knees. If he can get it over his knees, he has his, his hitching technique dialed down. He was taught by the best. Derek Poundstone was really a, a prominent user of, of that technique. And he's passed it on to his student. It's got the colorful leggings there. They do help the bar slide a little easier than they would against the, the skin. Currently the American record holder in the log lift of 475.75 pounds. So he's strapped in. He's one of the smallest athletes here today, but he's extremely powerful. 9-11 for Rob. Can he get it over the knees? He, no, not quite. Not quite. He's going to, you know what, he's going to have another go, but he's not going to do it. When you give that, that type of effort on the first guy, uh, first try, he's taking a deep breath. But honestly, if he gets this, I will be shocked. It's crowd trying to get behind him here, and it won't go for Rob Kearney. So 876 will be what he is settling for. Still good points for Rob. Five, fifth at the, at the moment on the on the deadlift. He'll be pleased with that, and he has some very good events to come. His dumbbells are extremely good. He's very, very good. Look out for him on the super yoke. His super yoke is absolutely electric. Brian Shaw now back up for his second attempt at 911 pounds. He's looking to become the new leader here. Brian Shaw is always so consistent. One of the reasons he's been one of the most dominant forces ever in strongman. I think you said earlier he started strongman 2005. I remember my first World Strongest Man. We were in the same group. And he's just it's been a pleasure to watch his career over the years. 911 pounds for Brian Shaw. This to become the new leader in the event. Look at the wide stance of Brian. Such a huge mountain of a man. You compare that stance to, say, you know, a Shivlikov, or some of the other guys. Completely different, but still effective. Shaw cannot get He's 911, okay. so this seems to be the, okay. the stopping point here as Shaw will exit the platform. Looks like he's okay, not one, limping. One thing I will say, this has been an exceptionally busy year. It's, it, the, the whole season has been condensed into a short period of time. A lot of the athletes are, um, are tireder than they'd like to be for this type of event. It's one of the questions that I, I was waiting to see how athletes were performing. For me, <laughs> J.F. Karam with his opening lift, He's the only athlete that looks in top deadlifting form today. The 
J.F. Caron, who is still your leader with Martins lead seats at 906 pounds, but 906 was Caron's opening lift. He still has two attempts to go as Tom Stoltman is now back up to the barbell, and he's going to try 911 pounds. Now, a lot of people said I was crazy because I said I think Tom Stoltman can win this event, uh, this, this whole contest. I mean, he is the world's strongest man, but he competed last week, and people still think he has some weaknesses. His deadlift has improved a lot, and look, there we see it. 911 pounds, he's getting stronger every time we see him compete. He's going to be over the moon with that lift. Puts him into first place. That's going to be big points on the deadlift. And trust me, he's got some exceptional events to come. That looked, I don't want to say easy, but it looked like he may have a little bit more in the tank. But 911 pounds for Stoltman puts him in the lead right now. Look at that. You can see it on his face. He's happy with that one. He had to work for it. You know, he's not fresh. He, he put in a huge performance on the deadlift just a week ago. But he's going to be over the moon with that lift. And now we have J.F. Caron coming in with 926 pounds. I believe he's capable of a lot more. I'm sure he's trying to save, save as much energy as he can for, for the later events. Well, as easy as 906 looked, hard to think that he's going to have a problem with this one. You can't see it, can you? 20-pound jump. You never know, but he, he's a very strong deadlifter. I'm expecting this to move exceptionally well still. He looks like he's here and capable of well over a 1,000 pounds today. Second of three lifts for J.F. Carone, and this to retake the lead that he just surrendered to Tom Stoltman. And let's remember, this is still his second lift. Nine twenty-six for J.F. Caron. Straps into the bar. He'll sit back. Deep breath. And I mean, just get out of geez. here. That is too easy for J.F. Caron, <laughs> and he's looking to take the opening event here, the 2021 Rogue Invitational. He is just laying the smack down on these guys <laughs> on the deadlift. The confidence in his face. He is clearly in a class by himself right now. Right now, no one's touching him on the deadlift today. Look at this. Such a strong guy. He's done so well the last few years. He just He's one of those athletes that just improved year after year. He's closing in on 40 and just getting better all the time. And that may be it. Caron may not have to make a third attempt as he is Brian Shar talking some things over. You see Jerry Pridgett in the background as well. But Caron only made two attempts. 926, the best score that we've seen. We saw a handful of athletes fail at 911 pounds. A couple yep. athletes fail at 911. I think, does Tom Stoltman? No, Tom Stoltman just had his third lift. Is he going to go? That's it then. Our winner of the deadlift, JF Caron, 926 pounds. And let's be honest, he didn't even get out of third gear. It's not uh, unexpected coming into this event, we had him pegged as one of the men to watch, and man, did he put on a show. Absolutely. The, the big score for me there is Tom Stoltman getting second place, and Liss is getting third, both ahead of Brian Shaw. That's going gonna, that's gonna to really set the presence of today's contest. We've got the dumbbell coming up later. And speaking of that, that's an event that plays into the strengths of Mateusz Kaliszkowski, who did not post a score here in this event, but he can certainly do some damage later on this evening when they take on the Sear Dumbbell Ladder. So one more look at the winning lift from J.F. Carone at 926 pounds, and he looked like he was just warming up. That was a pleasure to watch. I mean, I would have liked to have seen him pushed because he looked capable of some monstrous weights today, but it's enough for the win. With four grueling events still to come, he's saving his energy. Dumbbell later on today, perfect start for J.F. Carone. Let's go down to the field where Kiki Dixon is with your event one winner. Congratulations on winning the Elephant Bar deadlift, 926, no joke. How are you able to mentally and physically get that weight up? Oh, you know, deadlift is a good event for me. You know, it's my favorite event too. I was prepared for over 1,000 pool here this weekend. But I think it's first time in my career I don't need to fight so hard to win deadlift event. But I know uh, everybody got a hard season. 926 is good. You know, I pulled 100 pounds more than that in 2018 to uh, came second. <laughs> then well, 
The guys, looks like they're giving you a little bit of a break here. Obviously, still 926 pounds is an immense amount of weight. How do you begin to recover for the next event? Uh, you know, now we have almost five hours to the next one. I go eat, maybe two times rest a little bit to prepare for dumbbell. But uh, the good thing, I push maybe 80%, then I'm total fresh. He's got more in the bag. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Unfortunately, we do not get to see a 1,000-pound lift, but it was not necessary for J.F. Caron. 926 is the winning lift, and as you heard him say, he's going to go rest, recover, get some food, and attack the second event later on today. A much different challenge that we're going to see here uh, with the elephant bar. Absolutely. It's a perfect start for him, but we all expected him to, to really put in a good performance on the deadlift. He wasn't pushed in the end. We've seen much, much tougher deadlift contests in the past. He's got a big smile on his face. He's got maximum points. He's going to go and rest, as he said. But I don't think that would have taken too much out of him. He was capable of 100 pounds more. JF Caron exiting Dell Diamond here in Round Rock, Texas. As the strongmen are done until this evening, we're going to go from the strongest to the fittest. The CrossFit athletes are up next as they kick things off with their opening event. 926 pounds is your winning weight for the elephant bar and it belongs to Canada's J.F. Carone. Much more to come here from the 2021 Rogue Invitational. <laughs> 